again, it's Scott here. I've put a video together on how to make a modification to the front struts on your W639 Vito. Now, this modification is, um, is to allow you to change the oil and to repressurize the strut. Um, now, what led me to do this was, I guess, complete frustration um, with our system. I mean, to me, it's an absolute nonsense. Um, the strut configuration or the, or the construction of the strut on most of these cars, um, and here's, here's the strut that I replaced on the Vito, and I actually took to it with the cutting disc and cut it open just to see what made it tick. And, I mean, really, it's, uh, it's very, very similar in design to the, you know, the front forks on a modern motorcycle. Now, you know, when the oil gets tired in our motorcycle forks, we don't throw the forks away and put new ones in, we change the oil. Um, and if you look at this strut here, it has an internal cartridge, uh, just the same as my motorcycle forks. It has a compression valve on the bottom, just the same as my motorcycle forks. It has a bushing on the top, uh, and that's a Teflon, Teflon bushing. Um, it has a shaft with a piston inside, so rebound valving, just like my motorcycle forks. And all of this equipment is in perfect working order. The bushings, the, uh, the Teflon bushing in there is absolutely perfect, got a mark on it. Uh, the, the oil seal on the top is perfect. Um, but they're forcing us to throw them away and buy a new one just because the oil needs changing. I mean, these, these things were bouncing around a bit at 80, about 85,000 kilometres. Um, and I just think it's an absolute disgrace, you know, the, the, the whole uh, climate change thing about reducing our carbon footprint and everything else. Uh, it's just a complete contradiction because we've got planned obsolescence built into these sort of things. Um, so we're throwing them out, throwing out perfectly good components. You can imagine the energy that's gone into making one of these. Um, and we're throwing them out just because the oil needs replacing. So, you know, I think the, um, the climate change people and uh, those sort of guys, they probably never ever think about it. They probably take their cars down and just get the shockies replaced. And they don't even think about this sort of stuff because maybe they're not that technical. Um, so I, I just find it a complete frustration. So I've come up with a method um, which I think is, is going to work and uh, I'll show you how to do it. So thanks for listening to my rant. other than the oil inside needs replacing. Now in the old days they used to have a threaded collar on the top here that you could unscrew and you could pull the, uh, the shaft and the, you know, pull the shaft and the piston out and give it a good clean and replace the oil. But now, if I'll take this off, what they do is they peen the edges over and you know, make it a sealed unit so you can't pull it apart to replace the oil. So you're throwing out a perfectly good strut. All the components are fine, the seal is still fine. All it needs is the oil replaced. So, you know, to me it's total hypocrisy. What you do is just give it a clean, get all the dust and mud off. 
So first thing is I'm going to put a centre punch mark right in the middle. Now I've got a four millimetre drill bit here and I'm just going to put a bit of grease on the end of it because that will stop any swarf from falling down inside. Now a bit of uh, pressure is going to come out of here, so make sure you've got glasses on. You can hear the air coming out, all the nitrogen. There, there we go. So directly underneath that is the compression valve, and here's one here because I cut one of these apart just to see what made it tick. So this is the compression valve and that's sitting just under here. So when you drill through, you, you're going to um, just touch that end there, which is, which is okay, you're not going to damage anything. There, there are the shims, that's the shim stack there. And this is the, uh, the return valve just there. So you can see this. it's got a spring on it. So you're not really going to damage anything. The main thing is to uh, to try to minimise any swarf going into into the uh, strut. The same thing. I'm going to put a bit of grease on the 8.7 millimetre drill bit. So you can see that worked. The angle on the drill was enough to get me all the way through. And I've just touched the bottom of the valve there and you know, it's, it's cut a little bit of metal out of it, but that doesn't matter. I mean, it's a, a pretty substantial, um, you know, centre rivet really, holding it together. So that's not an issue at all. So I'll tap it first with a 1.8 NPT, um, and then we'll uh, let all the oil come out, which will flush any little bits of swarf that may have got in there. Now, to tap this, you can use 1/8 NPT or 1/8 BSP. The threads are almost identical, um, so it doesn't really matter which one you use because we're only talking about um, three or four millimetres of metal. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on here. So I've got a clean container here and I'm going to carefully take the strut out of the vise, turn it upside down and empty all the oil out and I want to capture it all so I can measure the bottom. And then you need to pump the piston up and down. That's empty. I don't know what's in there. It smells like uh, sardine oil or whale oil or something. But we're going to replace it with um, automatic transmission fluid, which is a really good uh, suspension fluid to use. It's roughly um, about 10 weight, but it's a good hydraulic fluid to use. It has uh, seal conditioners in it. And it uh, can handle high temperatures. So what we'll do is decant that into a um, measuring cylinder so we know what volume to put back in. So there's 450 millilitres of suspension fluid inside the strut. Right. Drill a second 8.4 millimetre hole about here. Um, so that is in line with the brackets. And the other thing you'll notice is that I've painted on the side there the volume that the strut holds, just for convenience and future reference. So the hole we drill here we're going to install a threaded Schrader valve. So that's just a tyre valve with the uh, 1 8 uh, BSP thread on it. 
So I'm just uh, hitting it with the center punch. And yeah, just pull a bit of grease on. And drilling the pilot hole first. Yeah, you can always use a uh, pickup magnet to grab any swarf. It'll even pull it out of the hole. So now we'll do the 8.4 millimeter. Just use the magnet tool again. Now we'll <coughs> tap it with the uh, 1 8 NPT. We've got two threaded holes in the strut now, one in the bottom there, and that's going to be for a plug, a, a small sump plug. And then we've got the one up the top here, which will be for a threaded Schrader valve. So the next thing is we're going to um, pour a couple hundred mils of uh, new ATF into here and just give it a bit of a flush to get the old fluid out. So we'll um, just whack the uh, plug in the bottom there. And we'll put another plug in there, just for the time being. So, the idea is just to uh, pump it up and down, which will suck the fluid into the cartridge. That should be enough. So now we'll put the, uh, the little sump plug in the bottom there, uh, this will be a, more permanently now, so I'll put thread seal on there and I'm putting some non-hardening sealant as well because we want to make sure this is well sealed. I've put a thread seal on here and some non-hardening sealant. Now to get the oil in we need to take the valve out of the fitting, take the top. So let's put the new oil in this. So here's my 450 millimeters of fresh ATF. And I've taken the, the valve out of the fitting. So I've just got some plastic tube here. And we'll put the plastic tube over that. Put the end in the, my oil. And we should be able to just suck the oil in. It actually creates quite a vacuum. You can see the level going down. So that's it, that's the 450 millilitres of oil in there. Just 
a matter of putting the valve back in. And now I'm going to pressurise it to 50 psi and this pressure is just to stop um, the fluid foaming. It's not to provide any sort of air spring. So that's it. And then put the cap on. So that's, uh, that's finished now, ready to go back in the vehicle. And it certainly feels good. And I push it up and down, that feels just as good as the new KYB I've installed. Nice so that's the finished project, my rebuilt um, sax strut. Now we're going to be installing these into my friend's um, 2007 W639 uh, 109 CDI Vito and we'll certainly give you some feedback as to how they go and we'll probably do a follow up video later on on how to change the fluid while it's still in the vehicle. So because we've got a sump plug on the bottom there and we've got a filler up the top, um, we should be able to work out a method to change the fluid while it's in situ, um, which I think would be a handy feature. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.